All right. Hey, y'all. So I am, first of all, it is, let, let's do some prerequisites. So I am in my apartment office, what have you. And um, so you're probably going to hear some voices. You're probably going to hear some people. Um, and that's going to be fine. You're, you're going to be fine. <laughs> um, we're going to be all right. So I want, uh, I've already prayed for tonight. Um, and so we're not going to be here long. I'm actually going to set a timer and we're going to um, get through tonight's word. We have uh, some, some technical difficulties tonight. I'm um, trying to make sure that we were um, able to get through. Y'all, just, it's my internet, but next week, this is not going to be a problem. Amen. Um, so we're going to, we're going to just trust God and move forward. So you have to bear with me because um, I actually don't have all the scriptures um, but we are going to get started. So I'm going to eat. I'm going to start from the very, very tippity, tippity top. All right. So how y'all doing tonight? How y'all doing? So we were supposed to, um, we started off with worship, but I wanted to remind you guys that it is our responsibility to bloom where we are planted. It is 100% up to us. And so um, I want to go over our vocabulary for the month of January. El Shaddai, all sufficient one. Lord God Almighty. I told y'all that I, I told y'all every time what I'm gonna drop the link to that Donnie McCricken song on here so y'all can hear it in y'all head every time too. <laughs> we also for this month. Now, the month of January is the month of divine settlement. And so um, I believe that last the last few months for me personally have been um, months of just like maturation, months of long suffering. And really what that means, I pulled these words out for you, is having or showing patience in spite of troubles. So still being consistent. What we love about this is that the word long suffering is one of the fruits of the spirit. You want to go ahead and grab your Bible and turn to Galatians 5.22 and bunny ear it or something, whatever you need to do. I like that. A second thing here, y'all, is to be mature, okay? And so that means having reached the most advanced stage in the process. Why is that important? Because if this is the month that God is going to settle things for us, we want to be at the highest level so that we can perform from a place of diligence and not a point of laziness. Because what happens is when you go, anytime you go to the strawberry patch, any kind of patch you go to, any kind of farming situation that you go to, you actually um, see that there is a uh, farm uh, holster, right, trying to help you gather this material, trying to help you gather this information. Come on, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You're trying to help you gather all of your, um, not information, but all of your, your harvest. And what happens is you can get tired carrying your, your harvest from the field to your table because it's a process. Y'all know we don't just go out here and, and eat the yam right out the ground. Got to wash it off at least. We got to take it. And who just plants one, right? Because we believe in God for exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask the Lord thing. Hey, you know, I told you about that last, I mean, I told you about that earlier tonight. But anyway, so we want to be mature so that we can receive all that God has for us. Amen. Special shout out to our leaders. Y'all see them down there in the corner. Bishop Artie McLeod, Lady Angela McLeod, my faves. Like I got some of the best spiritual parents ever that oversee um, this. And I just love them for that. Um, we always want to invite you to join our church family. You can learn more on YouTube and Facebook. Actually go to our website, trctoday.org and check that out. We have services on Sundays, 9-15. And you can always join us on Tuesday at seven. Um, and then we also have early morning prayer on Mondays, Thursdays. Um, and then we also have early morning prayer on Saturday. So I just want to remind you, um, these are our little church announcements. And y'all, I'm real churchy, you know, I grew up in a Southern Baptist church. Amen. So this is just what it is. So let's go ahead and get into tonight's word. I am going to pray. Father God, we thank you for this moment. And God, I just ask that you speak like never before through this live, Lord God. I literally don't. Don't have the strength, God, to do it on my own. But I know, Father, with you and all things, we can we can stand, we can suffice, Lord God. So just giving it all back to you. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. 
Amen. And amen. God, come into this life. Excuse me. God, come into this life. Speak to your people. Impart to us like never before. Encourage us and set us on fire. Amen and amen. So Jeremiah 17, 7, 8 says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in who? Him. Amen. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in your year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. That's when Jeremiah 17, 7, 8. Excuse me, but what y'all need to know is that all of the prophets, Isaiah, Ezekiel, um, Jeremiah, right, and, and the others, Malachi, all of them were devout Jews. So they understood the the promises of God like they studied it like how we go to school in our math science social studies and reading they actually go to school and learn their bible so this is actually a remake or a spin-off of this scripture right here psalms 1 1 through 3 it is as blessed is the one who do not walk and who does not walk and step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the lord and who meditates on his law day and night that person is like a tree planted by streams of water in which it yields fruit in season come on y'all one of the things that we got to understand, and this kind of goes back to our concept about the long suffering thing, right? When we're talking about things taking a process or things having to take time, you're going to yield fruit, but in the right season. Your trunk might not be strong enough to support a lemon, baby lemon tree, right? So anyway, it says, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do, prosperous let that you need to pray for that tonight father i pray that you replant me by your water god i pray that you prosper me lord god i pray that you help me lord to trust you that you increase my faith to walk by faith and not by sight in jesus christ name we pray amen come on y'all so here's the thing we talked about being planted. I wanted y'all to look at these words. These words kind of jumped out to me when I was studying this. So look at this definition of trust. It means to commit someone or something to the safekeeping of. So if we're saying we're going to trust God with our finances, we're committing our finances to the safekeeping of God. When we say we're going to commit our marriages, we're saying that we're, we're going to trust God in our marriage. We literally saying we're going to commit our marriage to the safekeeping of God. Come on. It says to have confidence. I have confidence in God. I have confidence that what he said is going to come to pass. So this is also another word they use, hope. But let's jump down. It says to place reliance on. And I, let's get luck and faith because we're believers and we want for that. But it says something else over which one has little control. So we're placing reliance on God because when it comes to this life, y'all, we have little control. Amen. Then look here where it's talking about being planted. It says to establish an idea in someone's mind. Uh, you know, we talk about the enemy, um, the way that Satan works. He literally doesn't do Nothing that he does is original because he doesn't have the ability, the ability to create. Only God, he literally can only mimic. And so when we're talking about being planted, one of the things that can throw us off is the things that we establish in our minds, what we believe in our minds, what thought processes we adopt, what, excuse me, what beliefs we take on. And when those things come, we literally have to uproot it with the word of God and remind ourselves that that is not true, that what we see is not real. Look, go with me to Isaiah 41, 9, 10, 41, 8. Excuse me, go with me there quickly. And the Lord, though, I need to find it in the right, the right version. I'm sorry, y'all, let me, because I want y'all to see how I first found it. 
oh, it's a message translation. Y'all listen to this. It says, but you, Sydney, because I mean, Israel is what it says, but I say Sydney, are my servant. So y'all trying to figure out what's my purpose. Your purpose is to serve. Amen. You, Jacob. So then he gives, he gives, he calls Jacob. He calls um, Israel by his old name, by his former life. And he says, even in your former state, even when you were Jacob, you were still my first choice. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. He says, descendant of my good friend Abraham, I pulled you from all over the world. I called you in from every dark corner of the earth, telling you, Sydney, you're my servant. You're serving on my side. He's reminding us of what's our assignment, the assignment that's over our life. He's reminding us over the purpose that we were created to say, to serve. So the reason why I read this in connection to being established in your mind is because anytime I start feeling like this is not for me, like maybe I didn't catch God, maybe I miss God, or, or I'm in the wrong place. I'm not doing this right. I'm doing everything wrong. God didn't choose me. I got to go back to this promise. We have to uproot what the enemy says we have to uproot what the enemy has planted and replant the word of God that's how we stay planted by the waters and in the word of God water is equivalent it represents the spirit of God so we stay planted by the spirit of God by meditating on the word of God and the bible says that we're supposed to do that how often right day and night period so then this other, this other definition is to secretly place a bomb that's set to go off at a later time. Now, this is how this works. Small things, it's the small, it's the little foxes that destroy the vine, right? And I want you to think about that little, this was a great image that someone gave to me. They said, Sydney, they said, look at your iPhone charger. Some of us have the charger and it's all to threads. Like we can literally see the wire and we still stick it in there, trying to hold it up, move it around, make sure that it's steady, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about, a little ready to charge it instead of getting a new one, right? And so eventually at a later point, that faulty wire is going, it's already exposed. It's going to rip off. Period. It's the same way with our thoughts. The enemy is going to come and plant these ideas for us to get off the path of God, for us to take an easy way, for us to change our course, for us to do what works better for what we want it to be, right? And then make a shift. And before we know it, we're outside of the will of God. And y'all know, I said this earlier tonight, God only funds the plans that he creates. He only puts the bill for his will, is how I heard another pastor say it, which I think is so dope. But what bombs, and this is another thing too, trauma, past experiences, see the enemy would try to keep us in a mindset of thinking like we're Jacob when God has already renamed us Israel. And so what happens is when we don't deal with Jacob, there are secret little places that we don't take care of and eventually it explodes. OK, so we get into the one percent marriage and then things happen and we explode. We get the business going and then financially we don't know what we're doing. So then things do what? Explode. So that's why we have to become planted and then we have to peel back the layers and say, God, I need you to fix with this faulty wiring. God, I need you to fix with this faulty placement inside of me and restore it to a new thing so that I can be prepared. And then I love this last definition where it says to place or fix in a specified position, more so because it reminds me of what God is really going for when he says that we are planted. He has placed us or fixed us in a specific position for a specific season. So let's go through these. What does being planted look like? Okay. So this person, um, they check the seed that is taking root in their heart. So they're not just sitting around with this overwhelming feeling of all of a sudden I'm angry or I'm feeling counted out or, or this or that. You know what I'm saying? They're not okay with that. They're literally saying, uh-uh, this does not belong to me. So I'm going to change the narrative. I proclaim that I am the head and not the tail. I decree that God, who is the unlimited, unchanging, ever stable source of my life is about to provide to me the will, his will for my life that I won't go for lack, that I won't want for anything. That's why they do. 
Then it says they do not allow others to tell them about their destiny. Lean into unwise counsel. Let's go back here to Psalm number three, where it says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in a way that sinners take or sit in a company of mockers. Okay, so we're not taking our advice from the wicked. And earlier I gave the example of making the decision to go against what you know God said you shouldn't do just because it's convenient, just because you see the world doing it. Oh, I'm going to go out here and I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to bash no more y'all witchcraft practices because I know y'all love your little waist beads. I know you love your yoga. I'm not going to pull, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do, I'm not, I'm going to let you be free, but we get in agreement with the world systems and we walk away from what the word of God says. I had, I, I had a thought, y'all. I was like, dang, I need some extra money. And so I told my homegirl, I was like, little bro, I'm in an Airbnb, my, my penthouse, my little, um, my crib is, is really nice. It's in uptown Charlotte. And so I'm like, yo, I'm in an Airbnb, my crib on the weekends. And then, you know, collect that cash. I was talking to my homegirl, I think I was talking to Ashley. And she was like, Stand don't do that. That's dishonest. Why would you do that? And I was like, man, I could use the extra cash. And she was like, well, God is getting ready to open up doors for you. People about to start sewing into your life. Why would you do that? Why would you, why would you forfeit being able to get the benefit of suffering long instead of just getting off the path for something that's quick and easy? Because what happened? She gave all these crazy examples, y'all. She was like, what if somebody doing drugs and they overdose in your house? And you got to explain, y'all. She was talking about people doing crazy stuff. I'm for real. Y'all can, call, y'all can ask her in the group chat right now. Go ask that joker. Go ask her. Um, and in anywho, they don't, but they don't lean into the ways of the wicked. Right? They don't do things that are wicked. They don't cheat folks thinking that it's for a short for a short come, right? For a short come up. Then, it, then they also don't lean into the company of mockers. That's the people who always got something to say about somebody's business. Y'all remember the whole situation that happened with Michael Todd? People were at, reaching out, talking to me. I was like, baby, mind your business. Or did y'all forget what happened to Miriam? Baby girl had leprosy. And while I don't know if leprosy is real today, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've never seen anyone with leprosy. I do believe that you can have leprosy in your finances. I do believe that you can have leprosy on your bloodline where everything that your children try to do, they fail because you don't know how to keep your mouth off of people. You are out of pocket. You're out of control. But the reason why you're like that is because you have to change the company of people that you're around. And you're still trying to figure out why is my life this way? Why is my life that way? It's because you haven't put yourself in the right room with the right folks. Amen. They bear fruit in all seasons. So I told y'all to go ahead and get Galatians um, 5, um, 522 out. And I want you to read that on your own time because I've already talked to y'all about the fruits of the spirits for tonight. But here it is. When there seems to be a lack of love, this person that's planted has it to provide. I'll give y'all a great example. I was in a situation with, with um someone who was receiving services from me and they had lied on me, y'all. They lied on me so bad. In a situation, something happened and that thing shifted. It literally turned over on them, y'all. And I was, I was standing there with this, with this person and they were crying. I mean, crying, 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 crying. And after all they had done to me, it was this wave of compassion that came over me. And I was just like, baby, what's wrong? Like, and it was real, y'all. It was very genuine. Like, what's going on? Talk to me. What's wrong? Just, just tell me, you know, uh, blink twice. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if, if it's something going on at home, blink once. If it's got something to do with your finances, um, jump up and down. If it's got something to do with uh, your cousin or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And that is how I know, right, that there's been a new thing produced in me by the season of long suffering because it used to be that the spirit of offense was greater than my ability to love. That's why it's so important for you to be long suffering. And that's why it's so important for you to learn how to bloom where you are, for you to learn how to be content, for you to learn how to thrive and, and focus on what fruit of the spirit is being developed in you in that moment because it's needed for you to go to the next level. What if I had learned how to be a, be a, a better forgiver? I wouldn't have been able to stand in that moment. 
What moment are you unable to stand in because you avoided the process of long suffering, because you avoid the process of being able to bear fruit? Let's go back and look at um, Psalm 1 and 3 and look at how they say it. They say, which yields fruit in season. If you abort the process, you're not going to yield that fruit. You're going to be out of order. Then it says that they are evergreen. And um, we talked about this a moment ago, being able to gather the harvest um, and be strong in that. But then here's the thing. Everybody loves talking about summer. Everybody loves talking about getting and getting and getting and getting and getting, right? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ask or think. But what happens when it's granted the devil is going to bring a new level of warfare to whom much is given, right? Much is required. What happens when you didn't lift the weights? You didn't plant the right word. You didn't plant the right mentality. You didn't plant the right character to sustain that harvest. So now your mind all over the place. You talk strong. You out here calling folk. Think I'm I'm you depressed and you this and you that and da 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 da. Which I'm not saying that I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, y'all. As a clinician, I get it. That's real life. Some of that stuff is hereditary. But if you know, like I know, you better take that clinical and that spiritual and pull it together while you over here going to sessions and while you over here getting uh, apl applicable tools to support you, you better also go in your closet and say, I bind up the spirit of depression. I bind up every suicidal thought. I bind up the hand of the enemy in my life. Father God, you said that you would give me um, a, a, a stable mind. You said you would give me a sound mind. Well, God, you said that you would plant me by your waters. Do it, God. The word of God said, keep me in remembrance. And you better stay there until you get a response. Keep going to your sessions. Keep going to your therapy. Now, do not abort that, especially if you're at a place where you really need some additional support. But doggone it, you better make sure that you're buying that thing up in the spirit because that's not your portion. Bishop is always talking to me. He always say, said, go with the peace of God. In this world, y'all, we're going to see troubles, right? What is that? John 16, 33. But take heart because I have already overcome it. Amen. And then lastly, y'all, they benefit from the promises of God. And I love this, y'all. Oh, God, y'all. This one, this one was so good to me. This one was so good to me. And that scripture is wrong. It's not 22. And I love this, y'all. Okay, so we know that this is, the, this is the month of divine settlement and we're walking into this year of prosperity. So listen to this. It says, the land you are entering to take up ownership. So we're not going to be written here. It's not going to be part-time. So long as we are in agreement with the word of God, so long as we are locked into what God says, we're going to reap the benefit, amen, and we're going to take up ownership. It's ours, right? I got the keys, keys, keys. I got the keys, keys, keys. No? Okay. Um, amen. So then it says, the land that we left. So it's a reminder that we're no longer there. Isaiah 43, 18, write that down. We're no longer in that. We're no longer in Egypt. Okay? But it says, well, you have to plant your own seed and water it yourself as a vegetable garden. That's not what we had to do. It's never the land you're about to cross. The river and take for your own is a land of mountain and valleys. So they're telling us up front, there are going to be some highs and there are going to be some lows, right? There are going to be um, great places for, for praise and for worship, right? But it doesn't matter because the area that you're going into, it drinks water that rains from the heavens. Y'all, let's, let's look at it from, let me look at it in a different translation for y'all so y'all know what I'm saying. It says, a land, excuse me, it says, but the land you're about to cross over to, to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks waters from the rain of heaven. Look at it, 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 look at it. <clears throat> Look, y'all, real quick, real quick. We got to go back to Jeremiah. It says, it does not fear when heat comes. Why? Why does it not fear? Okay, because it drinks the water of heaven. 
<laughs> it drinks the water. In in in, in the uh, King James version, it says the latter. The it's going to rain for the latter and rain for the for the um, upcoming. That's so good to me. And then it says a land for which the Lord our God cares for. God takes care of. We don't make this. It so dope. And it says the eyes of our Lord are always on it from the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. It reminds me of another uh, scripture in Deuteronomy that says we're blessed in the city, we're blessed going in and we're blessed going out. Amen. We're blessed coming in and we're blessed going out that we may gather our new grain, that we'll gather our grain. We're always going to have food to eat, a word of God to eat, um, wine and oil oil always represents uh, just another representative a uh, signifier of the anointing of holy spirit so we're going to have fresh anointing and then i will send grass in your fields for your livestock and i was telling y'all earlier now you don't want to get out here and be looking goofy you know what i'm saying you got a little a little ball head at your heart but it's got a couple of little pieces of a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of green everywhere else and you're like oh my gosh this house is so gorgeous this is so oh my god girl this was cute and then when you get down the street, you're like, well, baby, you can the grass a little, the grass was a little parched. <laughs> That's not going to be your testimony in this land. Because you are always green. Let me give y'all some warnings and then we're going to get up off here. Give you some warnings real quick. How you can get uprooted. You start to receive your water from the approval of others. You fall into alignment with the wicked ways of this world. Instead of waiting for God to do what it is that you need him to do, you like this. I'm going to call my home girl. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to rob Peter. Then I'm going to definitely punch Paul in the face. And I might borrow from Matthew. I don't know. Right? And then they... um excuse me, not how they can be over to follow the path of God. They don't follow the path of God. They do not follow the path of God. Here, let me tell you that down because I don't want y'all to be confused. They do not follow the path of God, okay? And they struggle, okay? Let's make sure we got this, to keep their mouth off of others. They struggle to not talk about stuff that has nothing to do with them. The word it says here, let's go back. Let's see what you're supposed to be talking about day and night. It's meditating on the word of God. That's all I got for y'all tonight. I'm about to pray for you all and then I'm going to let you go. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. I'm praying that it was um, empowering and encouraging, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for the place that you planted us right now. We thank you, God, for a spirit of contentment, for a spirit of love, of, excuse me, for a spirit of mind that is about love, that is stable, Lord God, that we're not afraid, that we're living in the boldness, Lord God, of your spirit. We thank you, Father. It is in your precious name, Jesus Christ, that we pray that you bless this live, Lord God. We pray that you bless all the lives of those who watch it. It's in your precious name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all have a good night.